All right. Where do we start? What got you into whiskey? It's a great question. About 16, 17 years ago, my dad moved to Louisville, Kentucky. He has Harleys. I had a Harley at the time. And we would meet up, and we would go on rides. I remember the first time that we were down there, coming over a hill and seeing a sea of barns. I asked my dad, what are these barns? And he said, those are rick houses. And at that time, that was the first time I've ever heard of a rick house. Next thing we know, we pull into this large entrance of a distillery, walk inside, and we take a tour. The tour was fascinating you know, about the fermentation and the creation and the aging, the history behind making whiskey. I mean, these places were absolutely beautiful. So we did a tour, we did a tasting, we grab a bottle, we go up another distillery, we pull in, we do a tour, we do a tasting, we put a bottle in the saddlebag. That just became our thing that uh, we did together for, for years. Never knowing that this was gonna be a future career path for me 15, 20 years later. Do you have a background in science and engineering? <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, I went to art school. I came to Columbus in 2003 to attend Columbus College of Art and Design. My background's in design and brand management. I was a graphic design major. All right, let's do this. This camera, this one, here. So I've known Adam about 20 years, even back at CCAD. While I was there, I fell in love with packaging design. We became really good friends, and then eventually we started drinking whiskey together. Whiskey was a natural thing. As I started to visit distilleries with my dad, I started collecting bottles. Back then, whiskey was just something I mixed with Coke. But hanging out with Adam I actually started to appreciate whiskey and started drinking it neat. I mean, it changed my whole perspective of what whiskey was. Another day at the office. Yeah, so after college, I was in the corporate world for six or seven years doing design work for small companies to large companies, I mean, Fortune 500 companies, and I learned a ton. Oh, hi there. So Adam's always had an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, we took the leap and he started his design company. That allowed me uh, a lot of joy, a lot of times of, of helping these companies be built from the ground up, creating their brands, and it got me really excited. And from there it grew and he was really successful and sought after. And we were kind of in a groove. He was doing design work, I was teaching. But ultimately what that did was give me this itch to how do I create my own brand, not just be a design firm that helps other people create and manage brands, but how do I create something myself that people can interact with on a daily basis outside of just design and marketing. Adam came to me with an idea that him and a friend had to start a brewery. The craft brewing market was an easy market to get into. When I say easy, it was booming here in central Ohio. And selfishly, uh, as the graphic designer and brand builder, I wanted to design beer cans. I had all these different product and marketing materials ready to go. And then we got wind of a major law that was changing in the state of Ohio. Up until 2017, it was illegal to have a restaurant attached to a distillery. So in 2017, when this law changed to basically where you could have this restaurant and a distillery attached, I had the idea of we need to switch. We just had this hunch that the next movement, the next craft movement in Ohio was going to be craft distilling. We really saw an opportunity to be the first to market that was a restaurant and distillery from the ground up. You can see the massive glass window staring right back into what we're doing here at High Bank. The only thing I knew about the distilling process was what I learned on the tours. To say that I knew anything like a fifth generation whiskey distiller down in Kentucky, I'd be an idiot for saying something like that. But as I was continuing to work on design and marketing and launching this brand, I was also attending Moonshine University down in Louisville, Kentucky. I was shadowing distillers up in Rochester, New York. I felt like I could take a fresh approach to what whiskey was. So when we started High Bank, I knew we were gonna launch with a vodka. I knew we were gonna launch with a gin, something that we can come out with straight away. 
I also wanted to launch with a brown spirit though. I did not want to launch with our own brown spirit that we made in-house because I wanted the bourbon that we make in-house here to have a proper time to age. And so from the start, we've been extremely open and honest about the fact that we blend whiskey. We had a hard open date of uh, late spring of 2018. I sourced over 100 different mash bills from almost 50 different distilleries. Night after night, I would go down into my basement and I'd have 12 Glen Cairn glasses in front of me, just numbered. And I would steal uh, one of my daughter's Tylenol medicine droppers. And I'd do two milliliters of this one squirted into a glass, four milliliters of this one squirted into a glass, one milliliter of this one squirted into a glass. And I'd walk away and I'd come back and I'd blind taste them. I would rate them, and then I would take the top five from the day before, recreate those, make seven new ones, rate them again. And I used to do that night after night after night. What the goal was, was no matter if I ate a slice of pizza that night, ate a salad, had chicken nuggets, you know, whatever it was, what is the whiskey that I'm always going to? That's where Whiskey War was created. Fast forward, blends done, April 2018. Two months later, we were opening up our doors. My schedule looked like this. I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I would then work on my design work from four o'clock until 6.30. 6.30, my wife Erica and the girls would wake up. Get myself ready and then help get the kids ready. We'd make breakfast, we'd hang out. I'd go to work and Adam would take the kids to school. Nine o'clock, get to High Bank, work at High Bank from nine until four. Get home by 4.30 and then I'd pick up the kids. We'd make dinner, we'd hang out as a family. And then bath time and bedtime. Kids would go to bed by 8 p.m. I either go back to work in my office or head back down to High Bank until midnight. And so I'd be back home, go to sleep, sleep for three to four hours. And then all the nighttime wake ups and we'd do it again the next day. I did that for about nine months straight. So what was it like on opening day? To see the renderings, see you know, from kind of like where we started to where everything ended up to see stuff actually looked like some of the pictures that we you know drew uh 18 months earlier was was really cool the soft opening experience was awesome being able to interact with friends and family and and just everybody that was following us along on that journey for you know a year and a half leading up to opening it was really awesome so over the first year anything that had the distillery or marketing to do with it it was me in that first nine months that we were opening, that's when I was also starting to finally form a team. And I remember hiring my first part-time help back here in the distillery, Michael Smith. A little more, just a hair more, there you go. If it was still just me doing everything, we would not be where we're at today. So 2019, we're really hitting a stride. We were starting to win some smaller local distillery awards. We won best uh, cocktail program in Columbus, best new restaurant. So we had all this momentum going from 2019 and we really, I mean, 2020 was gonna be our year. That's what we truly believed. Given the explosion of the COVID-19 virus in our state and globally. The coronavirus crisis. COVID-19. The coronavirus crisis. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Illinois and Ohio closing all bars and restaurants beginning tonight. Governor DeWine has closed schools, restaurants and bars. So as we all know, March 2020 hit where our distillery could continue to be open. Our restaurant in Ohio was mandatorily shut down. We were really faced with the aspect of do we hoard the money that we have or do we spend it on staff to keep them employed? We had such a great staff. We've always operated on a people over profits aspect we decided to keep people employed at High Bank. It ended up being a very risky move for us because we only had several months worth of payroll available in our bank account. Tonight, there's a much needed pick-me-up coming from a distillery. Once again, here's Bryant Somerville. 
The inside of High Bank Distillery as still as the outside. The 200-seat restaurant shut down during the spread of COVID-19, but production ongoing. And we're basically following the FDA's instructions on how to cut that down to make that hand sanitizer. Adam Hines is the co-founder and director of Distilling Operations. Wanting to help during the pandemic, the company last week began production on hand sanitizer. Within three days of the FDA approving any distillery to make hand sanitizer, if you sign their document, we we're making hand sanitizer. We made over 20,000 bottles, something that we're extremely proud of. We were donating it to any first responders, nursing homes, teachers, and then we were the first distillery in the area to actually sell it to the public. I knew the why? answer, but asked him anyway, why do it? I mean, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor. I can't be on the front lines, you know, so to speak, of any of that stuff. But um, that doesn't mean that we're not humans and that we don't care for each other and that we shouldn't be helping each other out. When we would open our doors at 11 o'clock in the morning, we would have 300 people lined down the street. They started coming in, buying a bottle of hand sanitizer and picking up a bottle of vodka or grabbing a bottle of whiskey off the shelf. And they started doing that every single week. People learned about our brand, discovered who we were. That helped us be successful during an extremely tough time. Dylan was part of our, this is Dylan here, by the way, everybody. I don't know if you guys met him. He was part of our, he was a bartender for us uh, for like three years. Two and a half. And then COVID hit, and he was one of the only people that would have rather work than sit at home. So we started making hand sanitizer and doing all that stuff. He started coming back here and uh, bottle hand sanitizer, and I realized how nice his handwriting was. I was like, hey man, you want to come start working in the distillery? It was his handwriting that got me. <laughs> Nothing gave me more joy or more excitement than when I got the call in uh, April of 2021 that we had won Best Blended Whiskey in America at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. So my first reaction was shock and then confusion because I had no idea what that meant. It sounded like a really big deal, but I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. Quite frankly, the most important spirits competition in the world is what it is. And just for an understanding of it, um, it shifts the way people think of a spirit. It's the who's who in the spirits industry. This past year alone, there was over 5,000 entries across 50 different categories. It's vodka, it's tequila, it's liqueurs, it's cordials, it's all of these different things. So I researched the competition, saw how big it was, and then I was like, holy sh**. So Pappy Van Winkle was one of the first American uh, whiskeys to win it, and when it did, it set the, the world on fire in terms of making people aware of what Pappy Van Winkle bourbon was. The history behind that competition, who's won it in the past, what that's meant for their brands, I will attest it's done all that and more for us. So the idea that an Ohio distillery could win, that's impossible, man. Like that doesn't happen. And the fact that it did is a tribute to what's been done here. There's some big guys that have never won. And for me to be a distillery in Columbus, Ohio, literally the COO of uh, San Francisco called me and asked me, who, who are you guys? And I was like, hey, yeah, we're, uh, we're High Bank in Columbus, Ohio. It's very humbling and very exciting. And it was even more humbling and even more exciting when we won it again. I think it's still a whiskey one. We won back to back, best one of whiskey in America, 2021, 2022. I don't know how you put winning it back to back into perspective. You know, it doesn't happen. Like to, to do something like that, I guess, you know, around here we know our football, right? Imagine winning a national championship back to back. That's what it does. It, it's, a, it's a differentiator, the likes of which it's hard to put into perspective. The amazing thing to me, the runner up in the category was our own product. We were competing against ourselves to win the 2022 Best Blood of Whiskey in America Award. I think the, the crazy part for me is when I have flashbacks of me stealing my daughter's Tylenol syringe and blending whiskey, what I was creating was 
you know, the future best blend of whiskey in America. And to get this recognition so early on in the life of High Bank is uh, extremely humbling, to say the least. It's one of those things where, you know, you win the first year and you think it could be a fluke. You win the second year, you're like, wow, like, nobody's really done that in a lot of years, you know, one back-to-back -back in any category. When I talk about the pressure and the anxiety that happens of like, what are we going to submit this time? My team and I, we really spent about six weeks tasting a lot of different products, a lot of different batches, making sure that we were picking the very, very best, that we all kind of agreed on that. So we landed on the eight products that we submitted this past year. Um, and lo and behold, when results came out, six out of those eight were double gold. The team and I packed our bags and we headed to Vegas for the awards ceremony. You got a flap of wings in order to go up. Vegas was awesome. And your winner is... High Bank Distillery, Whiskey Warm Barrel. So if I told you we wanted back to back to back, what would you say? Are you? I'd say hell of a job out of you. I'd say hell of a job out of you. That's... I mean, there's no, is there any precedent for that? I didn't think so. I, I, I've, never, I've never seen any, I mean, that's a hell of a job.